Here are the first few moves of this game. You can see right away it looks like there's going to be a matrix placed. And the best way to block that in this position is moving the knight to f6. Black uses a pawn move, chases off the queen. You can see here the queen is in the middle of the board. And a lot of times if a player brings their queen out early, you can develop your pieces while chasing the queen around the board. And the best way to do it in this position is by taking the knight and attacking the queen. Um, you want to try in the opening to move every piece just one time and not more than once because it allows you to get all of those pieces out into the game. Black moved the other knight instead which puts a tempo on the queen, which means forcing the queen to move. Here, that white pawn is colored red because if black were to take it, black would be putting a fork on the king and the rook at the same time. With the king being in check, the king would have to move out of the way, and then the black knight could capture the rook. I like to call that a fried liver. But instead, we had this, again, chasing the queen around the board. Remember, knights on the rim are grim. A better move in that position would have been just to move the knight to the c6 square. And you can see here, I like how black attacked white's queen again. And if you look at this position, White has only moved two pieces in this entire game, the pawn and the queen. If black wouldn't have moved the knight here on the side so many times, black could have gotten another knight out, could have uh, developed a pawn, maybe gotten another bishop out into the game. And if you can get more of your pieces out in the game and prevent your opponent from getting their pieces out into the game, you have a better chance of having a better position and ultimately winning the game. So white has to move that queen again. Another one of the strange pawn moves I see a lot in chess club games. Pawn on the side moving up two unprotected gets taken very easily. Play through a few of the moves here. Um, unprotected piece that black takes advantage of. Great job black for noticing that. Here, the black knight is being attacked. And I have a little saying in chess, I call them the ABCs of chess. So if your piece is being attacked, think of the ABCs. A would be to put on a better attack than the one that is against you. B is to block it. C is to capture. D is to defend. E is to exchange. And F is to flee. You can see there's an unprotected piece. So we are going to flee, which means move away, but we're going to capture a piece instead. Well, a free piece. Black doesn't do that. Instead, black puts an attack on the rook, which I guess covers letter A, attack something more than what you're being attacked. So you can see the knight is being attacked for three points, but black is attacking the rook, which is five points. So five against three. So that actually does fit in the ABCs of chess. White moves there for some reason, and black gets a free rook. You can see the black knight is unprotected, and white doesn't take it. So here's another tactic. It's called removing the defender. Black would like to be able to take the bishop, but it can't because it's being protected by the knight. So when you remove a defender, black would take that piece, and when it gets recaptured, then it could take the piece that it wants, which would be the bishop. And that's exactly what happens in this game. So fantastic job, black. That is the difference between great chess players and just mediocre chess players. White does notice the free piece, and I marked the file where the rook is green. That's called an open file. 
and rooks work best on open files because there's nothing in their way. So the black, the black rook can now move up and down at will on this rank, on this file right here. Here, black is being attacked. Remember the ABCs of chess? A is attack, and if you can create a better attack than the one that's against you, that's usually a pretty good move, and black actually does have that. If you look, the king is out in the open, so black can protect that piece and also attack the king at the same time. That would have been a really great move. Instead, um, black defends it, D for defend, which does fall under the ABCs of chess. So white attacks it again with a pawn. A pawn is worth one point and a rook is worth five. So black really wants to get that rook out of there because a chess player doesn't want to exchange a five point piece for a one point piece. And again, that king is open to be checked. But black defends again. And black was way ahead in this game until this point. Black is still ahead, but not nearly as much as he was before. So we will continue. In this situation, we have more attackers than defenders. The number one move in this position, according to the computer, is queen take pawn. If the queen takes the pawn, that's one point. Black would recapture the queen nine to one, but then white could recapture and be ahead ten to nine. So it's important to keep track of your attackers and your defenders, because if you have more attackers than defenders, you can usually squeak out a point or two more over your opponent and use that advantage to win the game. Here's an unprotected piece. So great job for white for seeing that and taking it. Here you can see that black has an unprotected piece. White could take that for free. Black is ahead in this game. So if you are ahead of your opponents by points, exchanges are fine. The less pieces there are on the board, the better your advantage is. So black should have taken the queen here, and then white would have recaptured. And yeah, it's a queen for a queen, no real advantage. But since black is ahead, it's actually a good advantage for black. White, on the other hand, if you're uh, behind in points, you don't want to exchange. You want to keep your pieces on the board as long as possible. So black moved the queen, but then white took a free piece. Black is still ahead in the game, but barely. Now the two pawns in the center of the board are connected. And if you have connected pawns, connected pawns get stronger and stronger as they move down the board. And you're gonna see in this game how those two pawns become really, really strong in this game. White puts a tempo on the king, forcing the king to move. You can see that I really like this move a lot. So here, white attacks black's pawn. You don't have to take an opponent's piece if they um, try to attack you. Black just ignores it and keeps pushing that pawn. I think that's a brilliant move. So excellent job, Black. And you're going to see how the other pawn is going to soon join it and become a really formidable force. Also, if you notice White's pawn here, there's no way now that White's pawn could capture Black's pawn. So Black's pawn is called a passed pawn. We usually say that pawns are worth one point, but if you can get a passed pawn, that pawn becomes stronger. So here, white tries to entice black by offering another pawn, but black doesn't take it. Black now has two passed pawns, and two passed pawns are really powerful. 
And if Black plays this game right, Black can march those two pawns down, turn one of them into a queen, and win pretty quickly. Now, when you have two pawns, two passed pawns in this position, they create an electric fence. And if you look in front of the king, the king cannot move to any of those four squares that are colored red because of the two pawns. And if black could get a piece to this square right here, remember that open file? If black could get that a piece right there, either the queen or the rook, it would be checkmate. So a lot of times in chess, if you see like a checkmate a couple of moves ahead, try to find out how you can get your pieces into that position and then you'll win the game. And chess players who are able to do that are the chess players who win lots of trophies and win lots of games. So we're going to continue. Ah, look at the position now. Now that the knight has moved, the rook now has the freedom to go to the open file and put a checkmate on the king. It's not what happened in the game, but black could checkmate white in as little as six moves. And if white makes one mistake, the checkmate happens even faster. So black moves the rook to the open file. If white doesn't prevent black from getting to this square, it's a checkmate in one move. So the only thing, not the only thing, but one of the three moves that white could make to stop that is to move the queen here. Now you can see there are two pieces that are lined up together on that square right here. So the queen could go down. If the white queen captures, then the black rook could come in and create a checkmate. But it is white's move. So the only thing that white can do to prevent a checkmate that quickly is by moving the knight to e2. What black does now is moves one of the pawns to check the king. King cannot recapture. King is in check. King only has two moves. Uh, one of them is an automatic checkmate. So black is going to move here. Now we pull the trigger on those two pieces coming down. King is in check. There's only one move that white can do to stop it. And there is checkmate. And the game is over. Instead, Black moved the pawn up, and there's still a forced checkmate in this position here. It's just going to take a little bit longer. In fact, now there's a two-move checkmate. You can see Black's passed pawn. All Black has to do is put that pawn at the edge of the board, promote it to a queen, and then it's a two-move checkmate. So let me go ahead and show you what that would look like. Black goes here. King is in check. King only has one move that it can make, and that is to capture. And then black pulls the queen down, and it's checkmate. Game over. But black didn't realize that it was that easy to promote. And we're going to play through this game, and this may be a little painful to watch. Unprotected piece there. Now here... The best move for black is to put the knight right here next to the king. If black can get the knight next to the king and then move the queen to this square here, it's checkmate. And of course, white has some moves to stop it, but it would be really hard for an inexperienced chess player to see that. So black has another really close checkmate in this position. But black doesn't see it. There's an unprotected piece for white but white doesn't take it. If you have the opportunity to put a tempo on your opponent, go ahead and do it. A tempo just means you're forcing your opponent to move. And do you remember when we talked about past pawns? White actually has two past pawns of his own that he could march up the board now and promote into queens. So this could be a really wild and wooly finish for this game. White moves out of the way, though. And here you can see if the white pawn moves up a square, it forks the rook and the queen. It's not a powerful fork, 
because the queen can come in and capture. But then white can put the king in check, another tempo. King moves out of the way, and then white can take the rook. And in this position, white is now ahead in the game. But instead, we get this. Now, white puts the tempo on the king. King has to move out of the way. And because white has a passed pawn, white could get ready to turn it into a queen. And white or black makes a critical mistake in this position. Black doesn't want the queen to get captured, which would probably be the best move in this position to let it get captured. But the queen moves down, leaving an unprotected piece that also puts the king in check. And now we have a forced checkmate in this position. Black's going to move right here, and now it's only a two-move checkmate. White promotes the pawn to a king. The king moves to e7, and now it's a one-move checkmate. And all white has to do to win the game is put the queen right in front of the king, and there's no place that the king can move in order to escape. The game does end quickly. It just takes a couple of more moves than maybe what it should have. And white ends up winning the game.